Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Ahead of the Curve. My name is Tim Cerniglia. I'm the Southwest Regional Manager for Schmidt. Today, we're going to show you how to use a rotary to mark round parts with your laser. As always, Kyle Williams from our tech support team is here to help. If you have any questions, please use the chat box on the right side of your screen to send him a message. At the end of the webinar, Kyle will choose some of your questions to share with everyone. Before we talk about rotaries and marking round parts, let's first remind everyone how a laser beam works and how that affects part placement in the marking field. When people picture a laser, they often think of a laser pointer, a thin, straight beam of light. But lasers in laser marking machines are not a thin, straight beam. They are actually cone-shaped. So, in order for a laser marking machine to control the direction of the laser beam, it uses a laser lens. The laser lens narrows the laser beam, condensing its power to a tiny focused area, creating what is known as a focal point. This is similar to the way a magnifying glass can be used to focus sunlight. The focal point is where the laser beam is most powerful. The distance from the lens to that focal point is the ideal distance between the lens and the part to be marked. There is some leeway though. You can still get a decent mark if the part sits just above or below that focal point. We call this the marking window. However, if the part falls out of the marking window, your mark will either be very light or there will be no mark at all. So, if all parts need to be a specific distance from the lens, why does it matter if the part is flat or round? If it's a flat part and it's placed at the focal point, the distance from the part's surface to the lens never changes. It's always in the marking window. But with a round part, only a small section can be in the marking window at any one time. This means the remainder of the part's surface will curve away from the marking window, making it impossible to achieve the desired mark without either moving the part or moving the lens height during the marking cycle. Here's a demonstration of what we mean. We're going to mark a logo on a flat aluminum nameplate and you'll see that it's pretty straightforward. Now, we'll do the same mark, but with a pipe. This mark will demonstrate what we mean by the marking window. As the laser marks from right to left, notice how the impact of the laser gets stronger as it moves into the marking window from the right side, then gets weaker as it leaves the marking window from the left side. Here, we got a pretty solid mark in the middle of the logo, but a much weaker mark at both ends. To fix this, you need to rotate the pipe while it's marking, so that the appropriate surface area is in the marking window. The safest, simplest, and most accurate way to do this is to use a rotary. Here's our rotary. It's wired to our GeoMark Pro. We can control the settings in scaps our laser marking software. First, we need to know the diameter of the pipe. As we see here, it's 66 millimeters. Now that we have that, we can attach it to the rotary. When you do this, you want to check for two things. First, make sure that the part is on the rotary as tightly as possible. 
You don't want the part to slip or fall as the rotary turns. Second, make sure the piece is perpendicular to the laser lens. If it isn't, your mark won't be straight. Next, we need to adjust the laser lens height so that the surface is at the focal point. Because we've used this laser many times, we know the focal point distance is 176 millimeters. So now that our part is set up, let's go into the software. We have a menu here for the rotary and all we need to do is make a few adjustments in the settings. We want to make sure that we choose fixed split size in the corner here. This means that when the rotary turns, it's going to turn the same distance each time. That distance is determined by a couple settings at the bottom of the window, the diameter and the angle. The diameter is the pipe's diameter, so we'll enter the 66 millimeters that we measured earlier here. The angle isn't as simple to come up with, and you may need to do some trial and error to figure out the ideal angle for your desired mark. Essentially, the angle refers to the length of the part that is going to be marked before the rotary turns. If the angle is too big, you'll see the mark fade at both ends. If it is too small, your mark may look choppy. Again, some trial and error may be needed here. Once we apply these settings, we can look at the logo in the software and see how the mark will be split. Red lines separate the logo into several sections. The laser will mark the first section of our logo up until the first vertical red line. There, it will stop, the rotary will turn, and then the laser will mark the second section and so on until the mark is finished. If we were to change the angle, we can see how that affects the way the software splits up the mark. The bigger the angle, the bigger the split and vice versa. Let's return to the original settings and make our mark. As you can see, the mark is nice and even, especially compared to the mark we made without the rotary, where the mark was faded at both ends. Now, let's take a look at what the mark may look like if we put in a bigger diameter. When we enter a diameter that's too big, the rotary doesn't turn enough and you get something like this. The opposite is also true. If we enter a diameter that's too small, the rotary overturns, creating too large of a space between the splits and the mark does not look right. Lastly, let's see what happens if the angle isn't right. We know that the bigger the angle, the bigger the split. Let's see how that affects the mark. If the angle is too big, the laser tries marking on the part beyond the marking window, causing it to fade away at the ends. Here's what happens if the angle is too small. 
This mark is actually pretty good, except that it's a bit choppy due to the visible vertical lines where all the splits are. So that was a lot of different marks. Let's take a look at all of them together to compare how they differ and to get a better idea of how the different settings affect the mark. The first mark on the left is the good mark with all the proper settings. Next is the mark with the diameter that's too big. Because the rotary doesn't turn enough, the splits are too close. In the third image, you can see that the opposite is true. If the diameter is too small, the splits are too far apart. In the fourth image, you can see that when the angle is too big, the mark fades as it moves away from the focal point and leaves the marking window. Lastly, if the angle is too small, the mark ends up looking choppy. Before we go, we have just a few minutes to answer some of the questions that we received during the webinar. Kyle? All right, so I'm Kyle. Um, I do tech support here at Schmidt Marketing Systems, and we're just going to go over a few questions. Um, let's see, so the first question we have is, how do you determine the proper distance between the laser lens and part? And this is going to be the same way you would do it with any other part. Uh, so you measure from the bottom of the lens to the top of the part. Uh, it doesn't change the fact because it's a round part. Um, the rotary is going to turn to keep the part in focus, so we just focus it the same way we would focus any other part. Um, question number two, can you speed up the rotary to mark faster? Uh, usually we would, let's just go with no, because then you would have to start worrying about the weight of your parts, um, stuff like over torquing uh, and burning out the motors. Uh, it's best to just keep it at the settings that, uh, that it comes set to. Um, and that's, looks like that's all the time we have for questions and I'll pass this back over to Tim. And that's all the time we have. Remember, please visit us on the web at gtschmidt.com or give us a call at 800-323-1332 for more information. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you join us again at our next webinar.